Hey guys, I've had a question on the Blender 3D Artist forum asking how you can choose which passes get saved into the multi-layer EXR, which ones get denoised, and how you can change the naming convention and the order to use them in third-party compositors. So the first question was, how can you specify which passes get saved into the render layer cache node? Basically, inside of Blender, you've got this section called View Layer Properties. And inside the View Layer Properties, you've got all these passes. Now, whichever pass you enable in here, is what's going to be saved into the render layer cache node. So if, if you don't want the depth to be saved, you just uncheck the Z and that will get rid of it from the render layers. And if you don't want the direct and indirect to be saved, then use the same again, you just uncheck them in there. And then when you do a render, let me just uh, do a render. You'll see we're in the render layer cache node, we've only got two layers, the image and the alpha. All right, so let me just get rid of the cache by clicking cache on cache. The next question was, how can you specify which passes get denoised? Now, you don't need to have the passes individually enabled for them to get denoised, but I'll turn them on now just so we can save them later. We'll go to the turbo render options, make sure we'll turn this on. Make sure it's set to ultra so that the individual passes get denoised. And the only thing that's going to get denoised is whatever you've got set in here. So if you've got diffuse enabled, that means that the diffuse passes will be denoised. Now, the color pass won't be denoised unless it's a situation in the scene which could introduce noise into the color pass. And those situations are, if you've got heavy depth of field or motion blur, you would check this and that would ensure that the color pass will also get denoised to make sure that any noise introduced by the motion blur depth of field will be removed. Again, if you check volume, so if you've got a volume in your scene and then you click on diffuse to say that there's a diffuse material which is occluded by the volume, then that will also denoise the color pass, but only for the diffuse passes. And that's necessary because the volume will generally introduce noise into the color pass. And similarly, if you've got an environment behind a volume, then you'd also tick the environment checkbox, and that would ensure that the environment gets denoised as well, which normally you wouldn't need to do. All right. Now, of course, you can use the render layer cache that's generated by Turbo Tools in your third party compositor and it will contain all the data that you've chosen to save. But if you don't want to use the Turbo Render Cache, you can instead create your own EXR file, and that will also allow you to rename and move the layers into an order that you specifically want. And the way to do that is by clicking on the Render Layers node, and then you go to the File Output node section of the Turbo panel, set it to open EXR Multilayer, or whatever you want. If you want a different image for each one, you can do that as well. But set it to open, ER, uh, open EXR Multilayer, and with this selected, you just click on Create and Wire. So that's going to automatically wire these up for you. And you'll see we've got one, two, three, four, five passes. And these are the ones that you've basically that are in here. And if you want to rename or reorder them, then that's just a simple case of going into the node section. And you can rename these and reorder them as well. If you want the image to just be called image, and you want the alpha to be called just alpha, and you want the diffuse direct to be called uh, diffuse direct, I think you said, etc. You can rename these to whatever you want. You can call it John if you want to. And we'll call that one John. We'll call this one Pedro. And if you want to reorder them, all you do, you click on it and then you just move it with the up and down arrows. And that's going to order them in the resulting EXR file however you want. So if you want the alpha above the image, you just move it up. Now, even if you set this to RGB, it's still going to output as RGBA. Basically, if it's a multi-layer EXR, even if you set it to RGB, it's going to output as RGBA. And that doesn't mean you're going to get additional alpha layers. It just means that each of those layers will consist of RGBA channel. So if I render this now, and I've got turn turbo render turned on. We've set it to ultra mode. That means that the individual passes are going to be denoised. If we specify that they need to be denoised, and then we just do render, turbo tools render. So it's gonna it's finished rendering, and now it's denoising whichever passes you've told it to denoise basically in here. And then when that's finished, if we drag in the resulting multi-layer EXR file, you'll see we've got this node here. And if I now click on there, we've got the alpha in the first spot, got direct, diffuse direct there, which has been denoised because we did specify that we wanted to denoise it. And we've got the image, we've got John. We've got Pedro as well. Now, if we open this in a third party application, 
for example, Affinity Photo, you'll notice on the right hand side here, we've got the diffuse direct layers, and then we've got an additional diffuse direct alpha layer. Now, that doesn't mean that in the EXR file, we've got additional layers. What this means is that your third party application has separated the RGB a single layer into two layers, one for the RGB and one for the alpha. Now, if you don't want that to happen, in Affinity Photo, for example, you'd go into Edit, Preferences, under the Color Options, and then you've got the Associate OpenEXR Alpha Channels. If you tick that, close it down, and then we'll just close this, and I'll reopen it. Now you'll see when we import it, we've only got the individual RGBA layers. They've not been separated for us. So you've got a lot of maneuverability to do it however you want. Now, if you do take this route, so let me just delete this one. If you're going to render an animation, chances are you do, you've set this up because you're not going to be compositing in Blender itself. And for that reason, you don't need to have a render layers cache node for every single frame of the animation because we're not going to be taking advantage of all these additional tools that we get with Turbo Tools for the compositor. Now, in that scenario, to save hard drive space, what's a good idea to do is turn off the animation option. Now, this means that the cache file, EXRs, Will, there'll only ever be one on disk. So the most recent frame that was rendered is going to be the one that remains on disk and all the other ones are going to be deleted during the render. Now that's important obviously because you don't, if you're rendering it out to a file output node, you don't want to have the same information twice. So just turn that off. You're only going to get one on disk and then all your output EXRs are going to be this one here. So hopefully that's helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.